In the last video, we took a look at uh, finding the standard matrix for a transformation by essentially undoing matrix multiplication. And here what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at a slightly different approach to this. Let's say that I know that this transformation T goes from R2 to R3. And I can tell the R3 part because basically what I have here in this transformation is the answer, right? And I've got three rows in my matrix. So I can tell that my R3 is, uh, I can tell that my codomain is, is R3. My range is R3. Um, but I can also tell that my domain is R2 because I have two variables. I'm doing different things with them in each of these rows. Um, but there are only two variables. There's no X3 in any of this. So I can tell just by looking at a transformation what it goes from and to, which spaces it goes from uh, and to. But in addition to just picking this apart using um, matrix multiplication in reverse, we have another way of finding the standard matrix. And that is using, um, using the standard basis uh, from, gosh, how long ago is that? It seems like a long time ago. The standard basis for R2 is the collection of vectors 0, 1, and 1, 0. All right, that was the standard basis for R2. If I take those two vectors and use them, let's see, I want to use the right notation here, use those vectors. You know, I've kind of got those backwards. Those really are the standard basis, the vectors in the standard basis of T uh, in R2, but I'm going to reverse them because we conventionally we put the one with the zero, uh, with with the one in the first position. We put that first, so I know it's a it's a trivial thing, but I'm just going to go ahead and switch them. So my standard basis vectors are one zero and zero one. And if I now take each of those vectors one at a time and perform this transformation on them, then I get 3 times 1, that's my x1, minus 4 times 0, because that's my x2 from x1, x2, right? Uh, in my second row, I get 5 times 1 plus 3 times 0. And lastly, I get 6 times 1 plus 0 times 0. And that is 3, 5, 6. And now I'm going to um, repeat the process, but for the other standard basis vector, that's going to give me 3 times 0 minus 4 times 1, 5 times 0 plus 3 times 1, and 6 times 0 plus 0. And that is negative 4, 3, 0. And those two vectors together, I'm going to call this one, let's see, what shall I call these? I'll call these W1 and W2, having come from E1, E being the standard basis vector, and E2. If I put those together in the same order into a matrix, oops, 3, 5, 6, negative 4, 3, 0, I get the same matrix as I did by unpicking this, uh, writing it as a matrix multiplication, and then observing that this the coefficient matrix was the standard matrix. So this is the standard matrix, and I've, I've arrived at that matrix a different way. Right? I've, I've, I've come to it from a different place, but it's the same matrix as I got um, in the in the previous video on the first screen, when I found the standard uh, matrix for the transformation by unpicking this. Once I have it, of course, I can use that standard matrix in the same way as I did before to find the transformation of a different vector. Let's go with um, 3, negative 2. The transformation of 3, negative 2 is going to be equal to, how did I get blue there? That was weird. 
is going to be matrix multiplication of the standard matrix for the transformation times this vector, 3, negative 2. And that is going to be 9 plus 8, 15 minus 6, and 18 plus 0. So as before, I picked a different uh, new vector this time than I did in the on the previous video. Um, but as before, once I have the standard matrix, I can use it to, to multiply uh, by any matrix in the domain, right? This is an R2 matrix because that's where we're coming from. Do that multiplication and you end up with another matrix in R3. Uh, sorry, another vector in R3. In other words, once I have the standard basis, sorry, the standard matrix, I can pick anything from the domain. This matrix, matrix multiplication will give me the image of that vector under this transformation. Your textbook in example 6.1.2 uses the idea of the projection of a vector, a standard basis vector, onto another vector, which is something we covered in, let's see, when we talked about the dot product, we talked about vector projection there. Um, and this is a nice application of vector projection, but I'm, I don't particularly feel the need to focus on that at this point. So I'm going to omit example 6.1.2 and the discussion that goes with it. Uh, uh, and so you can omit doing uh, participation activity 6.1.9 because it's based on that idea as well. And I will also, let me see if I can find the question here. The very last exercise, um, 6.1.4, the, the additional exercises, the 6.1.4 exercises uh, exercise is a similar problem again. So I will leave those, uh, the solutions to those two parts, uh, parts A and B of that problem. I'll leave those visible so that you can try it if you like and check your answer, um, but I'm not gonna ask you to do those problems. So that is it for this section.